and welcome back to the North Shore Event Centre. And we're here for Under-19 Women's National Championship semi-final action between Canterbury and Taranaki. My name's Morgan Maskell, and we're just 30 seconds away from tip-up now, so we'll take a look at uh, our teams. Both these teams went through. Canterbury went through undefeated after wins against Waikato. Hawke's Bay, Counties Manukau and Wellington in pool play. They feature Alana Waters, New Zealand representatives Amy Book, Charlotte Whitaker, Ezra McGoldrick, Lauren Hippolyte, Maddie Ed Edder, Rachel Pullen, Samantha Irvine and Junior Tolfins, Safia Wairau. Taranaki feature New Zealand under 16 rep Caitlin O'Connell, New Zealand rep Maya Watling, and their coach is Aaron Langdon, and we're getting ready for tip-off here now. A lot of New Zealand players featuring in this game, so a lot of talent on the floor. We see starting for Canterbury, uh, we see Esmer Gold McGoldrick uh, at the tip. She's a junior tall fern herself. Number 15, just to her left, uh, is Charlotte Whitaker, also a junior tall fern. Uh, we have number 7 at your top of your screen there, Safia Wairau who has also been a junior tall fern. If you're sensing a theme, just to the right of your screen is Amy Book, who's also been a New Zealand under-19, a uh, New Zealand representative. She's currently in the New Zealand under-18 squad. Out of your screen right now for Canterbury is Lauren Hippolyte, also in the New Zealand under-18 squad right now. And we get ready to start. Ball goes from Wairau to Hippolyte through to Book. They're swinging the ball around the outside as Taranaki are starting in an aggressive man-to-man. Uh, -man. Safia Wairau, nice little pass to uh, Whitaker, Charlotte Whitaker, New Zealand representative, Junior Tolfern, scores the first two points to open our game here. Taranaki at the moment will be the underdogs for the game. They beat Rotorua in pool play, but suffered losses to Harbour and Waitakere West, uh, but managed to get through to the semis on a bit of a tie break. As we see them open on a three-point shot, putting them up 3-2 nice and early. And Hippolyte counters with a three-point shot of their own. Whitaker with a huge rebound and generates a foul call there as Canary will get the ball on the baseline. Wire will inbound, Whitaker sets an up screen and receives a screen herself from McGoldrick. But the ball is given to Book, who will receive an on-ball screen from McGoldrick. Book skips to Hippolyte, she comes off a Whitaker screen and just misses her float. A nice offense from Canterbury, great ball movement early and also great timing on their screens. Uh, McGoldrick and Whitaker are doing a great job so far, freeing up their guards coming off screens. As we see Taranaki dump the ball down low. Tough drive, great defense from Whitaker, but a great rebound there. And McGoldrick with a huge block as Book gets on the floor and secures the ball for Canterbury. And it's a really advantage. Not only does Canterbury have strong bigs, but they have mobile bigs, as you saw McGoldrick uh, dribbling up the floor there. Uh, the athleticism, the movement capacity and ability, just like a guard. We're going to see uh, Book inbound the ball to Hippolyte. Both New Zealand under-18 representatives. Hippolyte with a nice cut through the key. And she'll receive the ball from Wairau and shoot that open three. Easy as you like. Great off ball movement from Hippolyte there. Cutting through the key, sucking in that defense and cutting back out to free space. And an excellent pass from Wairau to get her the ball. Canterbury doing a great job swarming the ball. Taranaki players have no time and space to shoot the ball right now and an errant pass with three seconds left on the shot clock. A great defensive possession from Canterbury just then. As we see Wairau now bringing the ball up the floor. Gets it to Book. She's looking to dump it down to Whitaker, but great defense there. Wairau into the key, Hippolyte open for three, this time attacks a closeout, kicks it to an open Whitaker for a mid-range shot, 
And that's bread and butter for Charlotte Whitaker. Great mid-range shot there, and that puts Canterbury up 7-3. to three. Nice and early in this game here. Let's see if Taranaki coming off a horn set, freeing up their point guard. But Whitaker, great defense. And this is what you'll see from Canterbury is they've got real size in their junior tall fern twin towers of Charlotte Whitaker and Ezra McGoldrick. But both of them can move like guards. Such an advantage as we see Whitaker get an offensive rebound, put it back, and one. And already you're getting a taste of what these New Zealand reps can do for Canterbury. Both those, both those players can move like guards. We've seen McGoldrick bring the ball up the floor. We've seen Whitaker defend guards, move her feet, stay in front, and then use her length to disrupt Taranaki's shots. Taranaki coming down the floor now. Some good movement, a zipper cut flowing into a middle on-ball screen, and they take that three-point shot. Book with a nice rebound. Good transition defense from Canterbury. McGoldrick just takes it right at them, unfortunately can't finish. But again, another taste of the ball handling ability and athleticism of Ezra McGoldrick. McGoldrick on the ball now. Whitaker's on the ball. A screen. Canterbury, you see they're switching screens, so they're not going to allow Taranaki any space. And by switching, they're really utilizing their athletic ability. McGoldrick and Whitaker can stay in front of guards. And then Book and Hippolyte and Wire are also strong and feisty enough to stay in front of Taranaki's bigs, who aren't quite as big as Canterbury's bigs. Book taking a semi-contested three now. She hits it. And Canterbury up early. Forcing the Taranaki coach, Aaron Langdon, to call a timeout as we see Canterbury after four minutes of action up 12 to 3. And for Coach Langdon now in this timeout, it's, it's going to be really tough for him to find answers. Admittedly, the Taranaki team is a little outmatched against the talent of the Canterbury team. And when that's combined with good coaching from Canterbury, you can see their ball movement and their player movement is, is excellent. On the other side of the ball, Taranaki might need to utilize a way to take advantage of Canterbury switching. Maybe get some mismatches there and see if they can take advantage of any. But Canterbury have the luxury of switching out a New Zealand player for another New Zealand player. So it's going to make life really difficult for this undermatched Taranaki outfit. Book with some good ball pressure. Flowing into a dribble handoff. Hippolyte on the ball now. Five seconds on the shot clock. Gonna need to shoot it. Puts a tough shot up over Book. Book with an excellent box out. And you're seeing McGorderick lead the break now. And she goes coast to coast. And that's excellent basketball from Ezra McGorderick. And a foul there. Thank you. 
Uh, we see Caitlin O'Connell with the ball now. She's into the game. She's a New Zealand under-16 player. Uh, diminutive point guard number 13. She was in the New Zealand under-16 girls side last year. And again is in the side this year. And due to the tournament clash where the New Zealand under-16s go away at the same time as under-17 nationals, uh, she's here playing in the under-19 national tournament as we see the Taranaki inbound pass go slightly awry. Great fast break from Canterbury and almost an and one for Amy Book as she'll go to the line and shoot two shots there. She hits the first there. Canterbury just getting offensive rebound after offensive rebound here. Wire with the ball. She gets it back, and Taranaki are admittedly doing a very good job swarming the ball. And unfortunately for them, though, a three-point shot there from Canterbury's number five, Sophia Kennedy, who has entered the game. Kaylin O'Connell. Her energy is going to be needed in this game. She's open in the corner now. Will they find her? Unfortunately, they don't manage to find their open player, and Canterbury out on the break again, and they're so good in transition. As we see, Amy Book had a mid-range shot, speaking to their skills and experience right now. See O'Connell with the ball now, taking it up against Kennedy. Taranaki running their set where the guard goes down onto the block and comes up, which is called a zipper cut. And then they run a middle on ball off that. And they get uh, Tisha Smith, number seven there, open for a mid-range shot. And they get on the board there. As we see Kennedy to book inside to Whitaker. And again, that's a mid-range shot that she likes. But unfortunately did not hit. Wide open three for Wairau. And Canterbury just, that's 2-0 boards in that position. Even if you make them miss once, make them miss twice. Most teams will punish you if you give them three shots. And their size advantage with McGoldrick and Whitaker inside is really starting to show as Caitlin O'Connell frees herself up for a mid-range shot, but unfortunately is errant. And that's a rare, rare turnover there from Canterbury in transition. Just miscommunication on that passing attempt. As we see Smith with the ball now, hands it off to Wellington Field. O'Connell with the ball now. She kicks it out to Langdon. Langdon unfortunately misses that three. Score now 21-5. In favour of Canterbury, a transition three-point shot from Book. Unfortunately, McGoldrick couldn't get the handle on that rebound, but Canterbury's class is showing now as we see Rachel Pullen into the game now for Charlotte Whitaker. And Safia Wairau comes out as well. And we see Caitlin O'Connell bringing the ball up now. Little horn set, the two bigs starting at the top there. And number four, frees herself up for a potential three-point three shot, but kicks it on to Simone Cook. Unfortunately, no dice for Tanaki there, as Canterbury come up with the ball once again. Nice and patient in their offense. Caitlin O'Connell reads their offense really nicely, but Sophia Kennedy picks it back up for them. Amy Book loves that mid-range shot. She hits another one. And really, really making life tough for Taranaki now as they're 23 to 5 up with one minute left in the first quarter. Tough drive there. She draws contact and one. It drops for her. Will the rest give her that and one though? Uh, they do not. So Taranaki will receive the ball on the baseline. Nice aggressive drive from Waira there. We see Cook will take it in. Screen the screener action. As O'Connell gets the ball. They dump it down low. And that's, that's unlucky. Katie Jones 
shot does not fall through. And Canterbury out in transition again. Book with the kick out through to McGoldrick. Cook putting pressure on Kennedy now. You see Book with a nice cut through the lane. Nice skip pass there, and she skips it to Pullen. Can't quite get it, and it's, it's tough for Taranaki when uh, the diminutive point guard, Sophia Kennedy, is getting, getting rebounds, offensive rebounds against you. Nice spin move from Book, and the contact, and one. Great play there from Amy Book. And Canterbury are going to... Sorry, Taranaki are going to be near, need to be near perfect if they want to stop this onslaught from Canterbury. Unfortunately, allowing them to get multiple rebounds in every possession is going to be tough. Referees stop the action. Quick reprieve for Taranaki. They can perhaps call their next set. They've done a good job executing their sets, and they've done a good job finding open shots against a well-drilled Canterbury defense. Having trouble getting the ball, and O'Connell gets it in the end. She drives the lane, but Kennedy does a great job sticking with her. As you see Walters putting pressure on the ball, pulling. Their ball pressure has been outstanding. Nice dump off pass from O'Connell, but McGoldrick with the block. What a great kick ahead pass from McGoldrick. And Cook fouls Book. Smart foul, really. And if you are going to foul someone in transition, it's important to make sure they don't get that shot attempt up. That you send them to the line for two. Uh, if you risk them uh, making that shot, and then give them the chance for one bonus point as a result of your foul. It's not a smart play, but Cook did a great job making sure Book couldn't get a shot off. And Amy Book is going to have to earn those two points from the charity stripe. Taranaki getting the ball over halfway now. They get it to Cook. And referee's going to call a double foul here. So pulling for Canterbury and Vafusu for Taranaki being a little too aggressive on the inside with each other. And you don't mind that call early in the game. Make sure the game doesn't get overly physical at the end. Both players are on notice now. O'Connell frees herself up. Cook setting a little screen and a quick dive for her. O'Connell getting it back. Nice pass there by O'Connell. And once again, though, great execution from Taranaki. Getting all the looks they want, but McGoldrick's length really disrupts Taranaki. As we see Amy Book pull up for yet another mid-range shot in transition, and O'Connell just comes underneath her and, and fouls her before she can land, putting Amy Book on the line for two more shots. And Amy Book is really proficient at that mid-range jump shot. And she's shooting her free throws at a high percentage as well. And Amy Book knocks both down, putting Taranaki down 28 to 5. O'Connell's going to have to shoot this. She puts it up. But we see the end of the first quarter. Same story as our first semi-final. One team just has too much talent for the other side in this first quarter. Canterbury, 28, looking very relaxed as we look into their huddle with coach Sally Farmer, a tall fern herself, and many future tall ferns possibly we're seeing on camera now. Charlotte Whitaker was a junior tall fern last year and is still continuing. Ezra Goldrick also a junior tall fern last year and will be once again. And we're seeing Canterbury able to rack through their players, put their substitutes on early, and rest their starters in the case they get the opportunity to play in the final tomorrow. Meanwhile, we go down to Coach Langdon's bench, and, and, and he, it's a tough for him, you know, they've been executing their sets really well, and overall they've done a pretty good job in transition. There's only so much you can do when 
Canterbury's going to take mid-range pull-ups in transition and nail them. And they're, they're bigger than you. They're going to take offensive rebounds off you. And he's just got to emphasize when you're playing a team that's much more talented than you, like Taranaki are, Canterbury really can only afford to give them one shot. You can't let them get multiple offensive rebounds in every possession. So boxing out is going to be paramount for Taranaki in the second quarter if they're going to want to keep this game somewhat competitive. And we see the crowd here enjoying the action. Crowd's still building as we're edging towards our men's semi-finals later in the day. We've just had some very exciting games with Auckland taking down Tasman in the men's quarterfinal and Waitakere with a huge upset with a two-point win over the heavily favoured Harborside in their quarterfinal matchup. That means Auckland and Waitakere will face off in the semi-final for a right to reach the final. Taranaki coming out with their best five. Starting five back in the game for Taranaki. Hippolyte off to Wairau. Kennedy gets through. Hippolyte's now open at the top. McGoldrick frees up. Great active zone defense there from Taranaki. Show, the mid, show that high post option to Canterbury and then took it away with a nice intercept. Langdon running the action now. Receiving a screen. We're seeing stagger screens cut coming off that. They're using that to swing the ball around to Smith. And didn't quite get the ball inside, but they will get the ball back. Good energy from Taranaki still, despite being down 23 early in the second quarter. They get the ball up top. They hand it off to Smith. And they free up Cook. She's a proficient three-point shooter. Unfortunately, that one doesn't drop for her. And Jones gets that rebound, kicks it back out. Great player movement off the ball from Taranaki. They're doing a really good job. And we're seeing Smith get the ball inside. Swarmed by the Canterbury defense. Unfortunately, can't get that kick-out pass to open shooters. And then Canterbury out and running in transition. Canterbury doing a great job throwing kick-out passes as Langdon blocks wire out on the way to the hoop. Hippolyte and Kennedy switch that on-ball screen again. Guard to guard. That's a good switch for them. As Maya Watling tries to post up Charlotte Whitaker, but to no avail, McGoldrick's length again disrupting Langdon's shot. Langdon doing a great job hustling, unfortunately doesn't come up with it. Great seal from Whitaker inside, and a great job from Lauren Hippolyte. She saw the floor, had her eyes up, just caught the ball, knew what to do before the catch, and passed inside to Charlotte Whitaker. Great job. Langdon, great high-low, but Whitaker's length this time really disrupting the shot of Katie Jones. Taranaki still doing a great job with player movement and ball movement, doing a great job executing their sets, but Canterbury's length just disrupting them a lot. Taranaki doing a great job staying active in their zone as they give up a Hippolyte 3. And that's what they'll want. You know, you're playing a more talented side. You might have to live and die by the three a little bit. Hope, hopefully that they miss their shots. And hopefully you can box out, keep them to just one shot. As we see Langdon's three miss. But an O-ball from Katie Jones. And Whitaker is punished with a foul call this time. Taranaki still doing a great job moving the ball. Great job crashing the boards there. As we see Katie Jones come out for Wara. an inbound set to Taranaki now and great little dive and great pass and unfortunately Smith can't finish that layup but again 
Nice execution from Taranaki. This is all you can ask for. Kennedy with a wonderful fake. And Whitaker so dominant on those off offensive boards. Taranaki come up with it. Again, limiting Canterbury to just one shot is exactly what they need to do. Now they need to do their next job and put points on the board themselves. See Smith come off right into Whitaker. Whitaker so great at chest-to-chest -chest contact. Nice off-ball movement from Waira. Unfortunately, can't finish that layup. And these shots need a fall for Taranaki because they're doing a great job on the defensive and on the offensive end. Unfortunately, they haven't added to their points total yet. Just over three minutes into the second quarter. Great pick and roll from Kennedy to Whitaker. Great pocket pass from Kennedy. And Whitaker isn't able to finish because she's fouled. And she'll go to the line for two shots. Canterbury last year in the under-13 national championships finished third. And it's been a while between drinks for them. But this could be the year that they win a national championship. Lauren Hippolyte and Amy Book have moved to Christchurch from Nelson to go to school at St. Margaret's. North Canterbury and Canterbury have combined. So Charlotte Whitaker, junior tall firm, previously of North Canterbury, now playing in this Canterbury combined squad. With their already strong players, Safia Wairau and Ezra Goldrick and Sophia Kennedy. They form a very formidable, formidable side full of New Zealand players. And they will be hoping to win this game and go against uh, Junior Tallfern Pear and Kendall Jeremiah and Charlize Ledger Walker from Waikato tomorrow. Great kick out pass. Great little uh, pin screen there from uh, Waira to allow Cook to be open on that corner shot. But unfortunately, again, shots just not dropping right now for Taranaki despite their good execution. Whitaker gets free at the high post. Great defense, but even better offense. Charlotte Whitaker, so strong, so composed. Great touch. Wara, nowhere to go. Does a great job pivoting and ripping the ball to make sure she can get a great pass off. They dump it down into the post. Nice kick out pass to Wara. And unfortunately, that shot doesn't fall either. And they need to stop the ball here. Canterbury out and running. So good in transition. And Hippolyte goes coast to coast with a left hand layup. We see Tananaki slowing the pace down now. As we see Cook. He's going to try and drive, but nowhere to go due to Whitaker's length. Kick it out to Wara. Kennedy's immediately on here, and they take a long mid-range shot, and, it's, and it goes well over the hoop. Good job from Tananaki not allowing them to run, but Hippolyte with a great kick head pass. Doesn't quite reach its target, but Canterbury have the ball with Whitaker now. Kennedy... Staying alert and aware, nice cut. And Kent and Whitaker, keeping her eyes up, seeing the floor, manages to find her on that cut. Great basketball from Canterbury. And, and they're doing everything you could ask for at this stage. They have talent, but they're not just resting on their talent. They've got great execution. And they are up 37 to 5 right now with 4 minutes and 44 seconds left in the second quarter here. Taranaki. Coach Langston has to be at a bit of a loss. He is doing everything he possibly can, as are the players. They're running hard. They've, they've been better in D-trans. They've been better at boxing out this quarter. Their execution's still good, and they're taking smart shots. But unfortunately for them, shots just not quite dropping for them, and they haven't been able to add to their points total. They've been at five points for just quite a long time now. And they'll be really disappointed with the scoreline. And to be fair to them, it probably doesn't reflect how the game's gone. Canterbury, though, they do deserve to be up, and they're a very talented side playing good basketball. And we're back in the action. We see uh, Caitlin O'Connell has been re-injected into the game. Jenny Broderick with the ball now has entered the game for Taranaki. Eva Langton 
still in the game with the ball. She shifts it to O'Connell. She shifts it to Wara. O'Connell, great kick on pass to Langdon for the open three. That's part of Caitlin O'Connell's repertoire. It's very subtle, maybe to the uneducated eye, there's not much to it, but great kick head pass. She knows what to do before the catch. Didn't look to dribble or shoot herself, knew to kick it on to the open player. And that's the qualities of a great point guard, great floor vision there. Langdon kicks it to O'Connell. O'Connell receives a screen from Watlin. But Messi Broderick can't get it, but a foul's been called, so Taranaki will maintain possession of the ball here. We'll see O'Connell take it in now. Broderick swings the ball to Langdon. And that pass doesn't quite reach O'Connell. Canterbury out and running again. O'Connell doing a great job on the ball. Roderick challenges that shot. O'Connell with a defensive rebound. Watling with the ball now. And Taranaki probably need a little more out of Maya Watling. She's been on, she's been in New Zealand squads, still in New Zealand squads. Right now, uh, Ezra Goldrick and Charlotte Whitaker are outclassing her a little bit in this in this game here. Tough though. Rest of the team is more talented. This Canterbury side, and that's what they need. Taranaki, an aggressive drive from Broderick, earning some free throws there for her and she'll go to the line for two to try and get Taranaki's first points of this quarter. She converts both, which gives Tanunaki their first points. As we see Kaylee Wellington Field into the game now. We see Millie Waira come out of the game for Tanunaki. And Tanunaki gonna need their zone to be aggressive now. They've done a good job stemming Canterbury's points this quarter with an aggressive zone. See McGoldrick swarmed there. An excellent pass from McGoldrick high low. Unfortunately doesn't come. And Taranaki once again doing a great job of keeping Canterbury to just one shot on the possession. Can uh, Taranaki running their zipper cut now. Langdon the zipper cut. Chooses to reject that middle on ball. Gives it to Watling. Watling with an excellent pass to Broderick. And Broderick will go to the free throw line again. She's showing a fearless determination to drive into the key right now, which is getting Taranaki easy points. They're down 30, and this is an opportunity for them to score points while the clock has stopped. Unfortunately, this is that first, but now's the second. 37-8 as we see Rachel Pullen re-enter the game now for Canterbury. As we see Sophia Kennedy head to the bench. I like what the uh, Canterbury coach is doing right now. They're keeping a good mix of experienced starters and bench players on right now, given that they have a comfortable lead. Getting everyone game time. Allowing their starters to rest for a potential final tomorrow. Long tournament, playing seven games, potentially in four, four days. As we see a nice basket from Canterbury, and O'Connell will initiate the offense here. No one comes out to mark O'Connell, so she pulls up for three, nails it. And signs of life now from Taranaki. Great ball pressure there from Broderick. McGoldrick enters the lane. And Taranaki earn a foul call there. So once again, only one shot in the possession for Canterbury. Doing much better. 
Langdon comes out of the game now, as does Watling, as does Broderick. Broderick did a great job while she was out there and forced the issue for Taranaki. And Langdon's been a leader for them, and Watling's their junior tall fern centre, who's the uh, key place in the middle of their zone. So it'll be interesting to see how Taranaki go with those three out now, with two minutes left in the second quarter. They'll be relying on O'Connell to make something happen. Unfortunately for Smith, no foul call there, and she throws that ball out of bounds. But you've got to like the aggression driving to the lane. See Hippolyte back in the game. Pullen looking down low from a Goldrick, struggling but doing a great job using her pivots. Oh, unfortunately for Taranaki, great ball pressure. And Pullen was really struggling to get out of there, but the referee determined that Valfusu was uh, reaching, fouling, Pullen. Inbound set for Canterbury here. Hippolyte gets the ball in. Uses a middle on-ball screen from Ezra McGoderick, who is diving onto a smaller player. Great active physical defense from Taranaki. Once again, prevents uh, Canterbury from even taking a shot. Great eyes up from Caitlin O'Connell. She sees the floor. Before she catch, caught the ball, she knew that player was open. Didn't look to take a dribble or shoot herself. Just threw the ball to her open teammate. And that is great basketball from Taranaki's point guard. Hippolyte with the up fake, using a middle on ball again from Ezra McGoldrick. Swings out to Pullen, who up fakes. McGoldrick taking advantage of the lack of boxing out going on for Taranaki, but thanks to McGoldrick's turnover, once again, Canterbury limited to one shot in the possession. Again, despite the fact this is a 27-point game, it's really unfortunate it's not close, because Taranaki have been really good this quarter. They've, they've uh, executed well, boxed out well, As we see now, Jones with the ball. Swings it through to Smith. Smith sees an opening. Can't quite get it, and Pullen comes down with that rebound, though. Bit messy. Smith on the floor, great commitment. And unfortunately, a little reach and foul in the backcourt there from Kaylee Wellington Field. Canterbury ready to initiate offense with 45 seconds remaining in the second quarter. They're up 39 to 12. Pullen just being patient on that wing until McGoldrick flashes to that elbow. Kicks it out to a wide open Lauren Hippolyte. Can't convert. Fortunately, the diminutive Caitlin O'Connell and Wellington Field are really struggling to box out the much bigger Pullen and McGoldrick. And McGoldrick muscles her way into the key and is fouled. And she will go to the line for two free throws with 30 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Goldrick nails that first shot. Now's the second. That puts them at 41 to 12 now. See O'Connell bringing the ball up the floor. 24 seconds remaining now. She kicks out to O'Connell, who should take that three. That's a great shot. Unfortunately, misses. But good shot selection from Caitlin O'Connell. Seven seconds left for Canterbury. Hippolyte's going to move the ball, and they're going to find a wide-open shooter. Pullen for three. Can't hit it, but good end of possession. Uh, good end of half possession for Canterbury. And they'll finish the first half here at the North Shore Event Centre, up 41-12. to 12. Taranaki just struggling to get anything going. As we see the Canterbury huddle now, nice and relaxed from their point of view. Everything's sort of going right for them. Good execution. And they're hitting those shots that they're taking. And their defense has been sound. And we'll see you back shortly for f in about four minutes for the second half here at the North Shore Event Center.
And welcome back to the North Shore Event Centre for our second half of our Under-19s National Championship Women's Semi-Finals. Uh, we're seeing Canterbury versus Taranaki now, and it's a big score here. It's 41-12 to 12 after one half. Canterbury are up. And for more information on the Under-19 Nationals, make sure to visit the Basketball New Zealand website for other results. And you can see the results from pool play for these teams. Canterbury went through their pool undefeated. They beat Waikato, who is the other finalist for tomorrow. They beat them by 11 in pool play. And then they had big wins against Wellington, Counties Manukau, and Hawke's Bay. Meanwhile, Taranaki came through on a different route after losing to uh, Waitakere West in pool play, who they could potentially meet in the third and fourth if the result here stays the same. They beat Rotorua and lost to Harbour and got to the semi-finals on a tie break to finish second in their pool. Taranaki have been very competitive so far despite the scoreline. They've managed to execute their plays well. They've managed to have good off-ball movement, good player movement. And they've managed to be still have a lot of energy and be very active in their zone defence, which has prevented the score from being any higher than it has. Unfortunately, their shots just haven't been dropping for them. Meanwhile, Canterbury on the other end have been hitting everything. They've been hitting their open threes. They've been hitting mid-range pull-ups in transition. They've been really doing all you can ask of them. If we take a look at the live stats, Canterbury are shooting 45%, which is admirable at this level. As we see McGoldrick get double-teamed inside, still get the shot up. Meanwhile, unfortunately for Taranaki, there are four of 30 shooting 13% for the game and it's it's been unlucky because the score should be closer than it is unfortunately for them these shots just aren't quite going in for them as we see a turnover and that's only their seventh turnover of the match Canterbury has six you know so they've been taking care of the ball they've been playing well the other stories of the game here have been rebounds Charlotte Whitaker and Esmer Goldrick just too big for this Taranaki side as Canterbury have 31 rebounds, the Taranaki's 12. And, and getting out rebounded was what made the score so large in the first place. However, Taranaki did start to compete in that area in the second half. And arguably, Raf Valkul on Taranaki thought they might have had possession of the ball after an errant Canterbury pass, but one of their players was judged by the official to a foul. And Coach Langdon not happy with that call either. As Charlotte Whitaker drove right into two players, but referee adjudicated that they were moving. Stepped into the players, what the referee's saying to the coach now, and Charlotte Whitaker showing her strength, her touch, her expertise, her experience, hitting the shot well, being fouled, and then nailing the free throw afterwards to convert that and one play. So two early fouls for Taranaki this quarter. Running their zipper cut action again, but Simone Cook rejects the zipper cut as Lauren Hippolyte predicated that she was going to do that. And Langdon gets free at the top. Book playing some ball pressure on, the, on her with four seconds left in the shot clock. Still some time. Taranaki's Tisha Smith throws up a rush three point shot, unfortunately. Oh, that's a, that's a lovely play. Again, the junior tall fern twin tower pair of McGoldrick and Whitaker showing their experience as Whitaker backdoors her player who is ball watching and McGoldrick puts the pass on the money to Whitaker who can't quite convert due to some contact. Ball goes to Book, her three point shot rims out as the ball goes to Smith for her to initiate the Tananaki offense. Langdon again rejects that zipper cut. Canterbury clearly had a discussion about that at some point. All their players are just very smart on their own volition. But they notice that Taranaki's offense involves the wing coming off a zipper cut. And they're starting to deny that cut. But Taranaki players smartly rejecting it to the corner.
see Hippolyte who goes for the line two but misses that first shot there. Taranaki initiating that offense with a kick ahead pass to Simone Cook. Langdon loses the hand a little bit but regains it. Nice off ball cut there from Cook, creating some space in the key. And Langdon gets a wide open three point shot. Unfortunately, just nothing falling for Taranaki. Again, you can't fault their shot selection. Langdon uses the zipper, zipper cut this time, gets open off it, but unfortunately her pass to Waira is errant, and Canterbury with a great kick ahead pass to Hippolyte, who unfortunately can't convert that left hand layup. Nice aggressive attack from Waira, kicks it out to Cook, Hippolyte carrying a hand to deter Cook from shooting the ball. The errant pass gives McGolder at the ball. She's proficient at leading the break, for, especially for her size. A real talent. And Canterbury, with their starters on the floor, are looking ruthlessly efficient. Landon with the ball tries to attack McGoldrick's closeout. Great defense from McGoldrick. And it's, it's really misleading. Common, common basketball would tell you that you can take players that big off the dribble like that, but McGoldrick and Whitaker uh, have such good movement competency for players their size, they're able to stay in front of even the quickest guards in the New Zealand game. And we're seeing that again there as McGoldrick uses her verticality to stay in front. And her length really disrupts Taranaki as Canterbury force a shot clock violation. And McGoldrick will come out of the game perhaps for the final time with the score at 51 to 12 in the third quarter. Canterbury now with one eye at least firmly on the final tomorrow against Waikato. As we see number 10 Alano Waters back in the game for Canterbury. Whitaker down low. She's judged for a travel. For Taranaki, Caitlin O'Connell back in the game. Their New Zealand under 16 representative point guard. Big future in front of her. As said, she's under 16 age group this year, so she's playing three age groups higher right now. Double bottom age. Triple bottom age, sorry. O'Connell comes off Lyra's screen. Great job. Finding the mismatch as Kennedy switched on to the much bigger Wara. So O'Connell fine manages to find her. O'Connell with the ball again, uses another screen. Nice pass to the diver, unfortunately. Whitaker again, using her agility to go and tip that ball. Book with another mid range pull up that she loves so much in transition. Follows it for her own offensive rebound, but misses. Canterbury get another O ball after that and miss. Wara being nice and aggressive in transition. And we're seeing the energy start to fall a little bit now for the Taranaki side. Little less player movement, off ball cutting now for Taranaki. And Whitaker just so aggressive and strong on those rebounds, grabs her own O board and just refuses to not score on that possession. And she puts the score at 53. To 12 now. As Hippolyte takes away the unclaimed space and O'Connell drives. She gets a much bigger player switched on her. Tries to find the mismatch again, but this time Kennedy manages to snuff it out.
Hapolite gets the inbound pass, manages to use a middle on board from Walters, and they get a kick out for a wide open three for Amy Book, unfortunately front room. We see Caitlin O'Connell with the ball. Kennedy's doing a great job staying in front. And you have to say it speaks to the improvement in our game. We're seeing all these players here manage to move their feet and stay in front really well. Long been a criticism of coaches that come from overseas to New Zealand that we're not great at defense. But we're seeing here players really slide their feet, take contact in the chest, claim unclaimed space. All these great concepts. What you're seeing the rise of New Zealand basketball, especially in the youth ranks, as we start to become more competitive with other highly regarded countries. And that's really the first defensive breakdown we've seen from Canterbury. And I guess we can cut them some slack. After 27 minutes of action, up 53 to 12, and Taranaki sees on that, showing why they're here, why they deserve to be here in the semi-finals. But Canterbury, especially Charlotte Whitaker herself, it's called for three seconds, but with a great seal. Canterbury with too much class right now, up 53. 14. Caitlin O'Connell bringing the ball up the floor now under pressure from Sophia Kennedy. Finds Broderick, who was great in the second quarter when she was inserted, but turns it over as soon as I say that. Hippolyte on the fast break, kicks to Kennedy, who attacks the closeout, tries to find a cutting Hippolyte, but a little bit of miscommunication leads to the ball going out of bounds. Uh, we see McGoldrick coming back into the game now, despite the fact they're up 39 points with 12 minutes left. But Charlotte Whitaker gets a well-deserved break. Truly dominant Charlotte Whitaker today. Uh, Taranaki Biggs, absolutely no match for the junior tall fern. Caitlin O'Connell with a great job dumping inside and a great kick out pass to her and she hits that three and, and she is acquitting herself excellently in this age group where she is triple bottom age. And another foul call there on Taranaki is Valfusi is adjudicated to be reaching. And unfortunately for Taranaki, and you can see Coach Langdon's displeasure, but the foul count is 5-0 against Taranaki, who are already losing by 38 now after that Kennedy free throw. Just a bit of salt in the wound. They just can't seem to get anything going right now. O'Connell up against Kennedy, uses that screen, gets a switch. Valfusi managed to get it back to O'Connell. O'Connell drives the lane. The right idea, but maybe not quite the right pass. But great vision seeing the roller. Baseline play for Tanaki frees up O'Connell. She kicks it out to Broderick. And Broderick's doing a great job just staying aggressive. And that's really important for Taranaki. And that's what got them going in the second quarter. And there you go. That's another first time we've probably seen a transition breakdown from Canterbury like that, where McGoldrick and Hippolyte not quite on the same page, and, and, and McGoldrick throws it out of bounds. Kennedy doing a great job doing what she's out there to do. Put pressure on the ball. Caitlin's great at finding good passing angles, manages to find her teammate uh, Wellington Field with a great seal inside for a deep catch and a two-point finish. Sophia Kennedy pulls up in the face of Wellington Field in response, doesn't quite get it as we see Jones not quite get the handle on the ball, leading to what should be Canterbury ball and the ref corrects himself, yes Canterbury ball. Sophia Kennedy will inbound the ball for Canterbury. We see Hippolyte take an open three. 
misses, but McGoldrick ends up with the loose ball and hits that mid-range jumper to put Canterbury up 57-18. Less than a minute to go here in our third quarter. Roderick gets the ball from a kick-ahead pass from Valfusi. Wellington Field trying to seal her much smaller opposite in the paint. But referee tells her to get out and the ball doesn't quite get to her when they eventually find her. And that's the difference. With a great point guard, you see, you see the floor, you have vision. Maybe they get Wellington Field the ball for another deep catch and a layup. Unfortunately that time they weren't playing with eyes up, didn't see the floor. And they passed to her too late. And it's not a great pass either. Hippolyte with the ball on the wing. Has to shoot it. One second left on the shot clock. Ball didn't hit the rim. And that's the first shot clock violation that Canterbury's had in this game. Taranaki doing a great job limiting them on that possession. As we see O'Connell use a screen from Wellington Field. Kennedy switches. O'Connell bravely drives the lane. McGoldrick comes to help, which disrupts her shot. Taranaki called for their sixth foul of the quarter. Canterbury, great defense. No fouls this quarter. As we see Coach Langdon having some words for the ref as he walks past. As he feels aggrieved at the foul count. A polite, normally a reliable three, uh, free throw shooter, misses that first shot. Nails the second as expected. We see O'Connell bring it up against McGoldrick, goes around her. Nice kick ahead pass to an open wing player. Always throwing ahead via pass is much more effective than dribbling. O'Connell has to force up the shot with one second left on the shot clock. And unfortunately doesn't come up with anything there. So three quarters done here in the women's under-19 national championship semi-final. Canterbury 58, Taranaki 18. Uh, for up-to-date results and tournament information and photos, check out the Bartsman New Zealand Facebook page. Lots of good photos there from the first two days of action and photos will be up tonight from today's games. And we'd like to thank NTEC for helping us out live streaming this wonderful event. Without them, we couldn't make this live stream possible. We have eyes now on the Taranaki huddle. Seemingly, possibly accepting their fate. Down 40 after three quarters. 58 to 18. It's really struggled to be able to get anything going in this game. Unfortunately for them, their play has been solid, but they just haven't been able to find anything. They're, they're shooting 16%. Basketball's a funny game. Sometimes the ball goes in, sometimes it goes out. And unfortunately for Taranaki, from the three-point line, where they've taken good threes, they're one of 12. And it's, it's a hard to win shooting under 20% like uh, Taranaki are doing. That's not to take away from anything Canterbury's been doing. They've been wonderful. They've played great basketball. But perhaps instead of shooting 15%, Maybe if they shot 30%, Taranaki would be, the scoreline would look a little more competitive from their point of view. But as we enter this fourth quarter, it is what it is. Taranaki down 14, trying to add to their score total of 18 at the moment. As we see the ball enter to Smith, she brings the ball up against Sophia Kennedy's ball pressure. Taranaki using that zipper cut again, and then they've got a middle on ball there. Langdon using that nicely, and they find a shooter, Simone Cook. And unfortunately, they're another three-pointer. They're shooting in the single digits percentage-wise now from three so far, and that's got to be disappointing because that's another good wide-open three that they've generated out of their offense. After that foul call, Canterbury will inbound it. Little screen the screener action. And the ref stopped the game for a football. 
He's judged that the Taranaki player intentionally used her foot to pick the ball. So Canterbury will get it back on the baseline. Once again, Canterbury get it inside to Walters. And that's great hustle from Walters. She manages to get her own uh, pull him, excuse me. She managed to get her own rebound. As Ida knocks down a three for Canterbury, just to rub some salt in the wound, to pile on the pain. Cook using that middle on ball screen. Langton open for three, and there you go. Finally, their second three point shot of the game. Their first one came in the early minutes of the first quarter, and their second three point make has come a little bit too late. Nine minutes left on the game. Uh, they are now two of 14 from three. And another foul call on Taranaki. The last eight foul calls in a row have been against them and their coach is now asking to speak to the referee about it. And he can't be happy, obviously, eight foul calls in a row against them. As Whitaker misses that little mid-range jump shot as we see Smith bring the ball up. Smith gets inside and Tanaki get their first foul call in the second half and it comes on an and one. And that's a great morale booster for Tanaki and Tisha Smith. So they've had a three, they've got an and one. And after so many shots for them missing, so many good shots running out, perhaps in this fourth quarter, even though it might be too little too late, perhaps some of these shots will start to fall and the scoreline will be a little respectable, as it deserves to be. Langton, good anticipation, just misses that intercept. Mid-range pull up there from Walters, doesn't quite get it. And Whitaker whistled for that foul. And we're going Taranaki's way. mid-range shot there from Watlin. Almost gets her own rebound. Loose ball and Kennedy ends up with it. Good pressure defense from Taranaki. Langton ends up with the ball. And a foul call comes. And the foul is adjudicated to be on Walters from Canterbury. And Taranaki will get the ball on the sideline. Seven and a half minutes remaining in this under-19 national championship women's semi-final. Canterbury 61, Taranaki 23. They swing the ball to Langton. Whitaker's length just disrupting that shot. Whitaker and McGoldrick's length have been very valuable. As talented as, as Book, Hippolyte, Wairau, Kennedy are, those two are really perhaps the MVPs of this team just because of their sheer length. They make it so difficult for the opposition to get any shot off in the key. And as we've seen today, if Taranaki can't make their outside shots, you make life really hard for an opposition, as Taranaki only have 26 points after 33 minutes of basketball. And that, in large part, as we see Pullen knock down a three, that in large part is due to McGoldrick and Whitaker. Supreme smarts, experience and length. Canterbury get the ball back after that sequence of play. We see Kennedy bring the ball up. She eyes a lane, dumps it off to Whitaker for a nice reverse layup. Doesn't get it to fall, but a nice little move. And ball now of Taranaki as Smith has it. Kicks it to Cook. 
picks up her dribble. They get it into Watling. Watling errant pass. As we see Irvine dribble the ball up the floor, hand it off to Kennedy, and Smith being a little over aggressive there. Kick it out now to nine. Irvine, she doesn't get a shot to fall. Well, Langdon has it now. A little break in the game as the rest figure out something with the score bench. A lot of great action happening here at North Shore events in today. Crowd starting to build as we're very close now to our men's semi-finals beginning. Going to have some great action for you today and tomorrow. Stay tuned as well in this live stream as we have the under-19 women's finals between Waikato and Canterbury. Six minutes left in this game for Canterbury, but with a 38-point lead, they're all but assured of meeting Waikato in that final, and it'll be a matchup of the Junior Tallfern Twin Towers, Charlotte Whitaker and Ezra McGoldrick against the Junior Tallfern Guard duo of Kendall Kiramaya and Charlize Ledger Walker of Waikato. What a great battle it will be. Men's semi-finals coming up next, so the men's final opponents yet to be determined, but should be great games coming up. So stick around on the live stream. Lots of games going on. Check out the Basel New Zealand website for all the information as well and the Facebook page. It'll have up-to-date results, photos from all the day's action as well. As we see Canterbury move the ball nicely, get a three for Irvine, doesn't fall, but that's nice ball movement. She gets it back. And Kennedy now with a wide open three. Langton gets the rebound for Taranaki. Just over five minutes to go here in the fourth quarter against Canterbury at Taranaki. Haven't been able to get their shots full. Nice pass from Langton. And one, another and one for Tisha Smith. Canterbury has the ball now. McGoldrick in the game. Gives it off to Irvine. Errant pass, but they still end up with it and get a layup out of that play. Taranaki quickly the other way. Nice basket from Langdon, using her length to shoot over the top of the smaller Canterbury defenders in that case. And it just... Again, to me, that illustrates how important the Canterbury bigs are. And when they're not present, it's very easy to shoot over the top of Canterbury, who without them aren't that big. But Whitaker and McGoldrick, very experienced junior tall fern pair, make it really difficult for the opposition. It'll be really interesting to see how Waikato deal with that tomorrow. Waikato aren't necessarily the biggest team either, probably the same size as Taranaki. Having two strong bigs, you don't often go against two bigs that strong. So it'll be really interesting to see what, how they respond to it, whether they adjust anything. And a foul here. Canterbury's in the bonus. So they have committed a five team fouls this quarter. So we all go to the line and shoot two free throws. The 
Goldrick gets that rebound, kicks it out to Irvine. Irvine sees a gap, goes all the way. Doesn't quite finish McGoldrick, an athletic offensive rebound, tries to put it back in. On the third attempt, gets an and one. A dominant display of offensive rebounding. And all ten players have a little bit of a laugh about it. Pressure off now, knowing the result is beyond doubt. A great play there from McGoldrick because she perhaps pads her offensive rebound stats a little bit there at the expense of her field goal percentage. McGoldrick running the fast break now against the smaller Smith. Nice behind the back dribble. McGoldrick jumps on the air and throws the pass. Smith again a little over aggressive charge with a foul. Taranaki that's their fifth foul which means Canterbury will go to the line to shoot two free throws this quarter. Irvine takes her second shot and makes that, and that puts the lead at 40. 72-32 with four minutes left in this semi-final as we see Caitlin O'Connell initiate the offense. We see Smith come up off that zipper screen, and Wellington Field sits that middle on ball. Langton now, nowhere to go. They throw it into Wellington Field against a smaller opponent, and that deep catch has worked for them a little bit. Caitlin O'Connell, nice little backdoor cut. Unfortunately, didn't quite get the shot off in time before the shot clock went off, and that'll be a shot clock violation. Irvine brings the ball up now for Canterbury. They swing it to Pullen, inside to McGoldrick. Nice kick out pass back to Pullen. She's open for three, she'll take that. Unfortunately, no dice, and Smith gets that rebound. Langton now against McGoldrick. Two very mobile bigs going against each other. Wellington Field on that deep catch again. And McGoldrick says no. A huge block from the junior tall fern, Ezra McGoldrick. Another block on a jump shot from Ezra McGoldrick. And Langdon has to throw it up with two seconds on the shot clock and unfortunately gets nothing but air. And Canterbury will go the other way. Another great shot there for Canterbury. Uh, O'Connell gives it to an open Broderick for three. Unfortunately, she gets front rim on that and doesn't manage to save it. We're going back Canterbury's way. Two and a half minutes left. The fact that McGoldrick's still in the game now with two and a half minutes up 43 probably shows again the value of these two bigs. They need one of them at the game at all times to be effective as Irvine Hits another three, and her bench goes wild, and she has a huge smile in her face. That's a great morale booster for one of Canterbury's bench players. Roderick trying to take them down into the post again. Unfortunately, her GPS is a bit off and throws it at the bottom of the backboard as McGoldrick hits a Irvine, who is leaking out for a fast break layup. Then two minutes left now in the under 19 national championship women's semi finals. We start to look ahead now to the finals matchup between this Canterbury side we're seeing out there and and uh, Waikato tomorrow. And Charlie Ledger Walker will be key for that. Canterbury side and it'll be really be an interesting matchup between the, Wa the Waikato guards 
They'll need to get an advantage, Hiramaya and Ledger Walker, on Book and Hippolyte, Kennedy and Wairau, if Waikato has a shot to win the game. Because you'd have to say objectively, Canterbury definitely have the advantage in the big area, the Goldrick and Whitaker over the, over the Waikato bigs. So they look to have an advantage in rebounding. Waikato's really going to need to use their advantage in the guards with Ledger Walker and Jeremiah, take care of the ball and make and take smart shots. Both teams are very effective in transition as well, so it could be a story of which team has better defensive transition to avoid the other team getting on fast breaks where they can receive easy baskets. See Broderick with the ball on the wing now. And she decides to jack that three with no other options. Doesn't quite get it. Kaylin O'Connell mixing it up with Esmer Goldrick for that <laughs> offensive rebound. And manages to get a foul call out of that. And we are keeping the ball here with uh, Taranaki. Two shots for Caitlin O'Connell as Canterbury are in the bonus. And she hits that first one. And nails the second one as well. She's a very proficient uh, free throw shooter. And we see the final few possessions of the game now as Pullen swings the ball across. It's inside. She's going to get the ball out for three. It's three seconds left on Canterbury's shot clock. And they get a basket out of that. 32 seconds left in the game now. Potentially Taranaki's last possession before they're eliminated from this tournament. They will play tomorrow against Waitakere West for third and fourth. They played each other in pool play. And Waitakere West won 77-51. But you would manage, you would hope for Taranaki's sake that we see a competitive game from those outfits tomorrow. We get into the final 10 seconds. Wellington Field managed to draw a foul call and, and she'll shoot she'll shoot two shots out of that to prolong the game. She misses both there. McGoldrick gets the rebound. No foul call, but Taranaki will get the ball out of bounds. 1.7 seconds left now. Again, we've really got to thank Intec for providing the service to help us live stream this. It's a great service for us. We're here at the North Shore Event Center as Broderick can't quite finish. So the final score will stand 87 to 35 Canterbury. Dominant performance make their way through to the final tomorrow against Waikato. Stay tuned for that tomorrow and stay tuned now as the crowd is built at the North Shore Event Center and we're preparing for a men's semi-final now at 4 p.m. and at 5.45 p.m. It's going to be a great day of basketball here so signing off and we'll see you very shortly for the next men's semi-final.